because I left what would complete it at home. I'll make the announcement now. Uh, I owe Rod a very good bottle of wine. And so I got it. And as I say, it's an incomplete announcement because, well, the announcement I'll may be complete. <laughs> <laughs> the bottle of wine is in the house. So. But what was it for? Uh, a long time ago, a long time ago, I was influenced by a group of people who I swore I would not be influenced by. Hmm, what group? Hmm. Right? I could tell you what swearing was there. So? I mean, there are some people who I had no respect for. And therefore, I carefully made sure that whatever they said, I would question and look at it myself. Except one thing, and that was the laws. So Rod today came over and he said, hey, Pierre, take a look at blah, 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 and you'll see something interesting. So I ran home and I said, oh my God, this guy. What a friend to have, right? Beautiful. Right. Right. So I didn't even know, therefore, I picked up a prejudice, put down the good work, and now after some 30 years, I'm going back to it. And therefore, uh, uh, Rod gets a bottle of wine. I picked it up. All right. And, uh, good. As I said, so I'll make the announcement even though it's incomplete. I'll open the door. I can get it during the break. During the break? Yeah. During the break? Well, we were all three going to come, except uh, Aaliyah has the run. So every time she thinks everything's okay, then she goes a few steps and hollers, Mommy. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, after in 15 minutes, if they were two, I figured mathematically in an hour there would be, well, okay. <laughs> the next thing is that Ken has delivered a Xerox copy to me only. No. No, no we all, all have it. We all have a copy. I thought it was some secret private, and it's from the laws, by heavens. And this is the uh, Is it likely line. that he might have a story to accompany it? This is what, where we're going tonight? Well, you know what he told me? No. That all these came out of his back pocket. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> That's where we're going. Anyone not have? There's some extra copies I see here. You see? And there's another announcement. Hold it. Uh, on New Year's, uh, there's um, we're going to have a party here. And it's a dinner party. So that means that yeah. it'll be both dinner and a party and a banquet and we'll be letting people know as to what to bring but basically yourselves as soon as you can find them by then <coughs> and if you already have then you can talk about them and Rod advanced the notion that we should that everybody should be prepared to give a talk on one of the speeches in the symposium I was going to offer that because and Mark said he'd be able without any trouble to pull it all together so long as Bob is willing to work it is a symposium on love, and also I'm going to be asking for some donations. But on love? Love donations. <laughs> I'll take a couple of them. And thank you. I stand line behind you, Gina. Well, no. I I think exclusive. I'll stand behind you, too, too, the expression if there was any I wouldn't take that standing up. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't take, wouldn't it take it laying down. down either. <laughs> we'll stop beating the bush. Uh -oh. <laughs> I knew we were going to go into comedy tonight. I just knew it. <laughs> the Seder plate is coming down the turnpike. <laughs> yes, that's the uh, requirement. Bring a Seder with you. Bring a Seder with you. Bring a Seder too. If you do. Along, but that is the theme of the uh, New Year's party here. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Just a little, uh, sounds good. Well, I certainly think it's nice that uh, Mark and Bob are willing to, to do that. And, uh, oh, I do. I, I, I want to really, really appreciate your, you guys' contribution to the evening. You know, it'll be everyone. <laughs> well, they have a certain They're going to clean up the end. They're going to bring it all together. Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, I just didn't want to exclude anyone. All right. Well, now to start working, huh? <laughs> great. That's great. Right. Mm.
What are we going to try? What kind of drinking system are we going to use? Well, I'll figure out what to bring. We're going to have. No, like, we'll just pull it up. Are going to drink for, to get drunk or to. No, no, no. only as much as you want. Yes, we want to drink as much as you want. No compulsion. No one should be forced to drink beyond what they think they can drink. <laughs> Right. That's good. Or so plan your meals ahead of time, like don't fill up at Christmas. Are you going to make one of the great spaghetti banquets? That's going to be part of it, yes. Right. Part of it. I just want to know how many different kinds of Bernstein salad dressing are you going to use? Probably one. <laughs> salad is just an excuse for Bernstein. Well, maybe we'll bring in several All right. Collection. They have 12 different kinds of Italian dressing. Bernstein bears. How much is a bumper? A bumper of what? Cross? Wine. A bumper. Any more announcements before we turn to less serious things? I mean, more serious things. What about the idea of a book fund? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hey. Uh, Bring in some money next time, okay? A bag of it. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring in some money. All right, we need some money. I because to take it because we wanted to start a book fund, and I'll tell you what a book fund is. Uh, when it looks like there's a good book, and all we can tell it is by the cover, we want to get into the cover, and therefore we may have to risk ordering several books, and that might certainly be worthwhile. If it turns out that it's justified. And then we can pass them around or say, ha, ah, let's go with this and uh, use it in our reading for Friday nights. So bring in a small bag. Small bag. Okay. Mm -hmm. But save enough for New Year, because I'll make sure you... <laughs> <laughs> You'll make sure we spend it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How are we going to do this? Dialogue? Are you going to talk about it? How do you proceed? Um, I was first asked to say something about why I even do it for the story. For the past uh, two or three times we've been discussing uh, chapter 13 of the Prophets. And you recall one night we struggled through uh, distinctions between things that are self-moving and things which uh, are moved by another, and things which are only moved, you don't move others, and things which are immovable, we can struggle through that whole thing. And uh, running parallel to this argument, uh, has been something that I had in my back pocket, namely this section from the laws. And actually, chapter or book ten of the laws concerns the whole uh, larger argument of which this is the first part. This is the first part of a three-part argument: whether there are gods. The second part is whether they have concern for things as small and insignificant as yeah. us. And the third part is whether yeah. they can be bright. So uh, chapter 13 has been dealing with whether there are gods. And we've been struggling to, uh, to come along in it. And we got to divinity when the active, when the <laughs> intellect is in act, and knows itself, and in result, there's this unity, and it is said to be divine, denominated divine. And we, I, this uh, in the middle here, uh, starting on the level of uh, animals and uh, rising up through different orders of soul, intellect, unities, 
and to the one. Uh, so what I would like, what I would propose to do would be to finish this first argument in Proclus before going to the bit in the laws so that we have the whole argument. And then we can go back through the laws um, and see how it runs parallel and that uh, Plato uh, adds a few things uh, in it. And uh, Kimberly, playing the prophet, said, we may not get through all of that uh, tonight. But that's the uh, idea. And I thought that you should all have a copy of this uh, portion of the laws in case we did get to it. Uh, last week we spent the first part uh, with that one long sentence. Which long sentence? If, however, this intellect is essentially intellect, on page 45. <coughs> And after after a discussion of that first long sentence, we went ahead and discussed the next to the end of the paragraph. But I propose to start by reading, having uh, this paragraph read over again, so it's fresh in our mind. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd like to have a volunteer to read. You read? Please. If however. Mm -hmm. If, however, this intellect is essentially if intellect, since Timaeus indicating that the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection, oh. denominates it divine. Wasn't that Timaeus, that Parmenides rather than uh -huh. Timaeus? Right. Since Parmenides indicate, let's see, if however this intellect is essentially intellect, since Parmenides indicating that the essence of intellect is the same with its intellection, denominates it divine. For he says that soul, receiving a divine intellect, led an upright and wise life. If therefore this be the case, it is necessary that the whole world should be suspended from its divinity, and that motion indeed <coughs> should be present to this universe from soul, but that its perpetual permanency and sameness of, subsist of subsistence mm -hmm. should be derived from intellect, and that it's one unit, and that and that it's one unit union and that it's one union, the conspiration, conspiration in it and sympathy and its all perfect measure should ori originate from that unity from which intellect is uniform, soul is one, every being is whole and perfect according to its own nature and everything secondary together with perfection in its own proper nature. 
participates of another more excellent peculiarity from an order which is always established above it. <laughs> How do I say that? And uh, we went through that uh, any class what is that in common uh, in the class comes from the higher order. Uh, in this room, uh, the bodies of humans, what is in common uh, in the bodies of humans is each has a soul. Uh, that is something from the higher order. The souls have intelligence, which is from a higher order. Uh, Would you say that soul is the essence of the essence of humanity? that which each of us have in common is soul. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be the essence of being human. What it is to be human. That the so uh, I don't know if that's a yes or no. I have difficulty with that word. I know you do, Ken, and I and apologize. I'm not responsible <laughs> for it. Uh, I mean, but I it occurs here. Could somebody help me? I know Ken has problems. I'm wondering if it's there, or if, if, the, if it's S, soul is the essence of humanity. That's, that's what I understood Ken to say. And I don't know if that's if I understood it correctly or not. I think you said that that was what we had in common. Okay, so would that would that be the essence or not? Not necessarily. No. No. Okay, thank you. That answers the question. I know. I took very little effort. Fifty percent. Do the yes or no. No is only a two-letter word. Right? Well, what's the difference between essence and the common element? Crocodiles and cockroaches both are said to have souls. Yes. So if we say the essence of man is soul, I guess in the same class would be cockroaches and crocodiles. In, in, the, in the extent that all have soul? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bodies have form, we'd be like we too, wouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another common attribute of, of all bodies is that they cast shadows in the sunlight. <laughs> Rocks and people. And that could be many common things, it doesn't mean that's an essence. Uh, by what criteria would it become an essence? Rather than just be common. Yeah, it's a good question, but it would hard to learn. Okay, yes. Yeah. Has to be intrinsic to the class. Let me ask you a question. How did you state that? Crocodiles and cockroaches? No. Uh, <laughs> it was a principle about for each order. Did you, did you say it was what was in common? That's one of the things. Yeah, it's one of the things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It has to be. It has to be a, a, and above it is archetypal, we said, you know, the, the principle of the thing, principle. Mm -hmm. 
And then you have principles of principles. Because as we go through this, uh, we'll see this unpacked a little yeah. bit now. That's, that's what he goes into, the relationship. I have a question. Mm-hmm. That's, he's talking in terms of the intellect coming out and the soul receives intellect. It's always mm-hmm. like a downward trend. Right, right. Um, I was trying to put that in terms of, you know, like myself. Mm-hmm. And if it's always going down, the soul is feeding the body. Making the body alive and right. able to move. So it's, in that case, it would be the soul that gets sick and the body dies? If we're always going down. I like to know how we go up. <laughs> Good question. Well, uh, the return. Uh, can come about whether whether you know you don't have to go as far as sickness and death. The return is that uh, is going to be described in here. That's where it comes up next. Uh, but he's focusing on the flow of power down, mm-hmm. the flow of divinity down. But there's also the the return is also described. You'll see. It. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, having done that long sentence, the next sentence begins with a word for. So he's going to illustrate, uh, explain something about what was just said. Will you continue from that, for that which is corporeal? For that which is corporeal, being all for motive, derives from the soul the representation of self-motive power, and is through it an animal. Mm-hmm. Is that clear? We had uh, distinguished in that section where we distinguish about what moves itself and what is moved by another. And uh, he's reminding us now that of this distinction. What is corporeal is ultramotive, moved by another. The, my body is corporeal. Yeah, mine too. Moved by another, the soul. So it looks like it's self-moving because I can I can initiate <laughs> motion. Uh, it has the representation of self-motion, and so from soul we derive the to be called. Uh, animal, since we are animated by soul. Okay? But soul, being <coughs> self motive, participates of a life according to intellect. Mm-hmm. And energizing according to time, possesses a never ceasing energy. Mm-hmm. And an ever vigilant life from its proximity to intellect. Mm-hmm. Who would have guessed that the way to possess a never ceasing energy is the proximity to intellect? Hmm. What does uh, ever vigilant add there? Have a very vigilant life. In infinite quality. We stand on guard for thee. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what kind of guard is this? Take take and buy this. Eternal vigils. <coughs> Watching the intellect. <coughs> So 
So salt possesses uh, from the higher, from the intellect, a never ceasing energy and an ever vigilant life. And the intellect, possessing its life in eternity, always subsisting essentially in energy, and fixing all its stable intellection at once in intellect, is entirely deific, deific, mm -hmm. through the cause prior to itself. Does that mean made God by intellect? Made, made uh, uh, deific through the cause prior to itself. Uh -huh. The prior cause is unity. Oh. Each yeah. one gets something from the prior cause. Uh -huh. Body is made of animal, soul is uh, intelligent uh, life. Intellect is made divine through the cause prior to itself, the thing God. Intellect is made divine by the God. Remember this. A discussion that we had about the saying of Parmenides, uh, and as he has it, that the intellect, when the intellect and the action of it are unified, so the result acting. is divinity. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that last word. The result divinity? is divinity. Divinity. Mm -hmm. The resulting unity is divinity. In other words, acting in, in t intelligently is divine. Yes. Who's saying it's a it comes after? What? Like it's it's an it's a unity that's generated from an act, or the act is generated from the unity. Well, I uh, I think I said it backwards the first time that it. Uh, this action of the intellect is a unity as it doesn't come about uh, uh, I'm trying to grasp what Pierre said last yeah, maybe week. Yeah, it would be better if you didn't. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you could save yourself some work by not using it. Just use what you have developed here. Uh-huh. He doesn't call it unity, does he? The cause prior to itself? Yeah. Well, uh, later on he does. Yeah, much I think. But all you need to do is follow it in terms of what's going on rather than introduce something that isn't there. Uh-huh. Right? Just yeah. The principle of less work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so intellect possessing its life in eternity. I take it that that long sentence we were talking about is describing always subsisting essentially in energy. Fixing all its stable intellection at once in intellect. Its intellection is fixed within. And it is deific. Uh, 
and this is through the cause prior to itself. There is a cause prior to intellect, uh, which makes it uh, difficult. question mark in my text by uh, stable intellection what what that is doesn't go beyond its boundaries okay. doesn't go beyond its boundaries no. well of course it wasn't fixed it was fixed within Mm -hmm. Well, stable intellection is action. Its action doesn't go beyond itself. It's always within. And the uh, it seems that I'd have to think up another quality, or else it'd be a redundant sentence. When you can't, then you'd be saying it's within this is within, because right? he says, uh, "All its stable intellect at once in intellect." Mm -hmm. Stable is in intellect. In other words, he's not adding anything like that by saying it's stable intellect. He says at once in intellect. You just say. It's it is at once in itself, or in intellect. Mm -hmm. So it seems like stable is, is picking up some other feature. <laughs> and an activity. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's, uh, it's actuality. An activity of intellect, which is actuality. Mm -hmm. Which is your Actuality, uh -huh. stable means uh -huh. actuality. That's right. I was see why I was drawn back to this then because trying to make sense of action of it and you see it. <coughs> well, why don't you should you stay there? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. I think that's right. That's what it is. Intellect it is. possesses <laughs> life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Essentially, energy, <coughs> and fixes and fixing all that stable act of intellect at once in intellect. Hey, whole thing's entirely deific, 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 Mm-hmm. Through the cause prior to itself, which is God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next sentence uh, again explains or clarifies this, starts with another four. For it has twofold energies, as Plotinus says, some as intellect, but others as being inebriated with nectar. It must be the unstable. The movable and elsewhere he observes that this intellect by that which is prior to itself and is not intellect is God. Is it God? 
that they got, in the same manner as soul, by its summit, which is above soul, is intellect, and as body, by the power which is prior to body, is soul. This is like a really, this is a reiteration of what he had gone through prior in reverse order. Because he started off with all that is corporeal, his alter motive, and is an animal through soul. So, and soul is intelligent through intellect. Soul is intelligent through intellect. And intellect, intellect is divine. the effort <coughs> through the thing that is before it. Before it. Okay, that uh, brings us to a uh, conclusion. All things, therefore, as we have said, are suspended from the one through intellect and soul as a medium. And intellect, indeed, has the form of unity. But soul has the form of intellect, and the body of the world is and the body of the world is vital. But everything is conjoined with that which is prior to itself, and of the natures posterior to these, one in more a more proximate, one in a more proximate, but the other in a more remote degree, enjoys that which is divine. And divinity indeed is prior to intellect, being primarily carried in an intellectual nature. But intellect is most divine as being deified prior to other things. And soul is divine, so far as it requires an intellectual medium. But the body, which participates of a soul of this kind, so far as body indeed, is also itself divine. For the illumination of divine light pervades supernally. 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 Pervades supernally as far as to the last dependency. Yet it is not simply divine, but soul, by looking to intellect and living from itself, is primarily divine. Mm -hmm. It's a symposium, isn't it? It's becoming like a friend of God. <coughs> Immortal, different. <coughs> sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Power flows, or divinity flows down all the way to body, uh, uh, insofar as each lower level partakes of the higher. And soul, by looking to intellect, if it doesn't look to intellect, it doesn't happen. But by looking to intellect and living from itself is primarily divine. When you don't look to intellect, uh, it's not fine. And so then the whole return is mentioned. So we have been talking about, we've got this structure here and seen something about how he moves back and forth uh, and how divinity may be found on each level all the way down to bodies. Uh, and now he's uh,
we've only got one, two more paragraphs, and he concludes the argument. He's almost got everything together here now to conclude. He wants to uh, do some divisions and talk about divisions. My reasoning is also the same about each of the whole spheres and about the bodies they contain. For all these imitate the whole heaven, since these likewise have a perpetual allotment. And with respect to sublunary elements, they have not entirely an essential mutation, but they abide in the universe according to their wholeness and contain in themselves partial animals. For every wholeness has posterior to itself more partial, partial essence, as therefore in the heavens the number of the stars proceeds together with the whole spheres, and as in the earth the multitude of partial terrestrial animals subsist together with their, their wholeness. And thus also, it appears to me to be necessary that in the holes which have an intermediate subsistence, each element should be filled up with appropriate numbers. For how in the extremes can holes which subsist prior to parts be arranged together with parts, unless there is the same analogy of them in the intermediate natures? But so, so he's discussed several spheres, and the, the whole heaven, and then he's discussed, uh, and as the whole heaven has all the multitude of stars, uh, other wholenesses likewise have their own multitudes. The uh, Earth has a multitude of animals, and it seems only logical that the intermediate spheres should likewise be filled up with appropriate numbers. Well, he, whatever is between heaven and earth, There are many uh, spheres below the whole heaven. Uh, the, the whole heaven would include the sphere of the fixed stars. And below that would be our solar system, uh, the planets. Uh, A smaller magnitude of some sort. Mm -hmm. And that has an order to it also. And below that is what's in the earth, or in here, our world, including all the animals and plants and all those orders. So I, I imagine uh, such things as the solar system would fit in, in the middle realm. There may be many other, many other spheres, uh, but that's how I understand that. 
you're going from the from mm -hmm. ma macrocosm to the microcosm, mm -hmm. or from the from the heavens to the earth. Those are the extremes, and then he's mentioning what's in between. Does somebody have anything to add on that? always established after the same manner and gives completion to the universe as possessing life indeed it will always primarily participate of soul but as preserving its own order immutable in the world but as possessing but as preserving its own order immutable in the world it will be comprehended by intellect and as one and a whole and the leader and ruler of its proper parts, it will be illuminated by divine union. Mm -hmm. That's what happens if each of the spheres is an animal. Not only the universe, therefore, but each also of its perpetual parts is animated and endued with intellect, and as much as possible is similar to the universe. For each of these parts is a universe with respect to its kindred multitude. In short, there is indeed one corporal formed wholeness of the universe. But there are at many others under this, depending on this one. Mm -hmm. There is one soul of the universe, mm -hmm. and after this, other souls. Together with this disposing in an orderly manner the whole parts of the universe with undefiled purity, one intellect, and an intellectual number under this, participated by these souls, and one God who connectedly contains at once all mundane and supermundane natures, and a multitude of other gods who distribute intellectual essences, and the souls suspended from these and all the parts of the world. Mm -hmm. For it is not to be supposed that each of the productions of nature is generative of things similar to itself, but wholes and the first of mundane beings do not in a much greater degree extend in themselves the paradigm of a generation of this kind. For it is not to be supposed that each of the productions of nature is generative of things similar to itself, but that holes in the first of mundane beings should not in a much greater degree extend in themselves the paradigm of a gener generation of this kind. Hmm, it's the accent. Sorry, but the accent in the sentence gets it. We yeah. can't be supposed that each of the productions of nature is generated of things similar to itself, but that holes in the first of mundane things should not, in a much greater degree, extend in themselves. Right? Do you agree that each of the productions of nature is generated of things similar to itself? Can you name some productions of nature? What about plants? Are those productions of nature? Sure. Do they They're produce solar. things similar to themselves? And the other plants? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Humans produce things similar to themselves? Chickens? Weeds. Weeds? 
fettuccine? Acid? <laughs> <laughs> So, if each of them does, it is not to be considered that the that holes and first among the beings should not in a much greater degree extend themselves the paradigm of a generation of this kind producing something similar to itself. Do you see that? You must be saying this about negative negative or something. Mm-hmm. If you can suppose that about plants, then how or did you not suppose it about something higher? Yeah. To use your example. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, because it's kind of in the negative, or it is not to be supposed, mm-hmm. and it reads like, well, you're not supposed to suppose it. Well, it doesn't <laughs> complete, it leaves a pain in there, mm-hmm. and it picks it up with the should not, Yeah. and you have to put in an X, mm-hmm. but it's not to be supposed X should not. I think that's... Yeah, so it ends up But it gives positive. a premise, or, or it gives a supporting premise. That's kind of that's a, true a wonder to it. That's supposed to it's true in the trivial, it's obvious in the greater. Yeah, if you were to suppose uh, the trivial, you shouldn't suppose that if you sh- should not, in a greater, extend in themselves. It is a double negative thing. It's triple negative, but that should not. It's not, but that should not. It's working from the, the uh, observed phenomena up, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Okay. If you observe right. phenomena, there's no way it's that you can up. deny yeah. the intelligence. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, it's even. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> to a greater degree. So, so he has uh, concluded that there must be not only one God, but also a multitude of other gods. Therefore, that there are gods, which concludes that first argument. Uh, And he's going next to uh, Would you read the one last sentence for the, the similar is more allied? For the similar is more allied and more naturally adapted to the reason of cause than the dissimilar, in the same manner as the same than the different, and the bound than the infinite. These things, however, we shall accurately survey in what follows. So that's a IOU for what follows. But we shall now direct our attention to the second of the things demonstrated in the laws. Mm-hmm. That the gods providentially attend at once to holes and parts, and, and shall summarily discuss the irreprehensible conception of Plato about the providence of the gods. Mm-hmm. So that's now coming to the second point and to chapter 14. Um, the portion that came out of the laws here is a portion of the argument having to do uh, with that there are gods.
Having, having uh, Plato, what, what comes before this was a place where Plato had introduced the, uh, the argument with the impious people. And he had distinguished the different types of motion and that the soul was capable of uh, moving itself. And he, we pick it up here at that point. Um, I'd like to uh, briefly run through it before uh, actually reading it to point out uh, the parts of it. Uh, he's first talking about what is a definition, the name, and the being. Uh, the name soul is related to a being and to a definition, and he discusses that. Uh, on the next page, soul then drives all things in heaven and earth and in the sea through its motion. And then a question as to whether it uh, does this according to intelligence or not. Or what kind of a soul is it that guides? Is it uh, the best? Or the opposite? Uh, the next page, there's a very nice section which wasn't in Proclus, what he calls the image of the motion of the intelligence. in which he gives us an image of a spear turned on a lathe. Who uh, did this, didn't we? Hmm? Didn't we do this some time back? I remember this that spear turning on the lathe. Was that in this? That might have been the Tomatoes. Or did they do it from, from this? I think it was spoken about. <coughs> mm -hmm. Because I remember when I picked this up, it looked like there were several things that looked pretty familiar. Mm -hmm. Then on the next page, he's saying what applies to all applies to each, and he's going to take the case of the sun. And he, he then brings up the question of in what way soul might be said to drive the sun. And, uh, and finally, uh, on page 298, is there anyone who will agree to these things and, main, and maintain that all things are not full of gods? So, uh, the part about the image of the motion of the intelligence is different in, so, uh, in, in being in here and not in Proclus. Proclus has the main points of the argument, uh, the distinction of the, what is self-motive, 
the uh, idea that the soul, uh, the world gets its motion from the soul, but its sameness from intellect, perpetual sameness from intellect. Uh, We have about 19 minutes. Would you like to read some of this? Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? I mean, what's our goal here? With are we comparing the laws here with what? We've just done it. Yeah, remember he started off with saying he was discussing uh, that Plato discusses three propositions in the laws. And this concerns that first one, that there are gods. Right. The last of the gods have to be bright, right? Yeah, and the middle one is that they have a concern about small and insignificant things uh, as much or even more so than great things. <laughs> And uh, so there's a lot more in Book 10 of the Laws than there is in this bit in Proclus. But you can see that uh, the basic strategy, the basic argument, he's, he's uh, recalling the argument as he tells us about it in what we just read. Mm -hmm. If I had to pick one section to read, I would uh, pick one about the image of the motion of intelligence. Uh, because we haven't read uh, that part. On the other hand, it might be... We can compare that with his description of intelligence later on. Yeah. I mean, just a, mm -hmm. as a thought. <coughs> it might be good to have a look at the uh, at this from the top. He breaks up the whole intelligence in a model later on. It's a tri three part model, mm -hmm. which he calls intelligible as the higher, mm -hmm. intelligible and intellectual as a medium term, and mm -hmm. intellectual as the other extreme. So he's got intellectual and intelligible on the mean of those two. Mm -hmm. so. He, he's, at this point, he said, rather than just give a picture of the intelligence itself and its motion, that he would give an image. Why is that? Because if we were to try to look directly uh, with our eyes at the motion of the intelligence, it would be blinded. Why is why? I mean, are you using that blinded metaphor? Or how are you yeah. using it? Are you going to get mind blinded or what? Is it like coming out of the cave? Type minds? He said, let us not make our reply by looking straight on and thereby, as if we were looking at the sun, create night at midday, because we supposed intelligence were ever visible and adequately knowable by mortal eyes. One can see in more safety by looking at an image of what is being asked about. Are we reading the video? Hmm? <laughs> he may have used this several other places. So analogy, he's using it as an analogy when you said blind. Mm -hmm. Create night at midday. You know what is in on when you do it.
So is that, is that a blindness, not by a radiance, but by a, by a lack of light? says, because we supposed intelligence wherever visible and adequately knowable by moral eye, eyes can't. That means, uh, to, on the contrary, mortal eyes cannot uh, adequately know intelligence. It's not a lack of light, it's that oh, eyes can't yeah. see intelligence. As uh -huh. if we were looking at the sun. Yeah. As if we were looking at the sun. Yeah. See, if you take that and the subject you're dealing with, then it's an analogy. Yeah. Well, it's going to be rather curious in a few steps. What? I don't know. Oh, it's going on. What's the image you're looking at? Well, it would be something analogous to the sun. Wouldn't it? We're trying to find an image of. I have to go back. Circular things turned on the way. Yeah. And that's um, going to be the image. What's well, where? Image where the spherical must be holes, huh? Uh, the entire mm -hmm. path and motion of heaven. No, that's kind of path and motion. Yeah, back on the. I see. Uh, Where do you see? If. Back on the page 295. If, you amazing men, we should declare the entire path and motion of heaven and of all the beings in it has the same nature as the motion, revolution, and calculations of intelligence and proceeds in a kindred way, then it is clear that one ought to affirm that the best soul supervises the entire cosmos and derives it along such a path as that. That's what's at stake. We're going to compare the entire path and motion of the universe with the motion, revolution, and calculations of intelligence. Well, well that's going to be. We're going to get an image. We're going to get an image. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're going to have. Are you saying we're going to look at the universe as an image? That's what promised here in So now we want an image of the intelligence, and then we'll be able to compare the motion of the heavens with that. Same as the nature, too. Right? Mm -hmm. So you take the next paragraph, keep reading it. Mm -hmm. How do you mean? Let's take as image that one among those ten motions whose intelligence resembles, which intelligence resembles. What the heck was that? Recollecting it for you, I'll make our common reply. Well, what's that mean? Where are you reading? Yeah. Where are you reading? 897. So let us take as the image. That one, that one among those ten motions, mm -hmm. which intelligence mm -hmm. resembles. That which intelligence which is, is or, or yeah. can be said to be. It resembles. It resembles a one of ten motions. 
So then it's posterior to it. So it comes yeah, we, ain't get, we ain't getting the real thing. Yeah, so it's afterwards. It's a copy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a resemblance. But is it saying, it's saying that intelligence resembles it? Not that it resembles intelligence. Mm -hmm. Well, the <coughs> well, I kind of throw you off. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I didn't hear the first part of that. I think the question you're asking is: this, is, it, is intelligence being stated here as a resemblance or image, mm -hmm. or is it, or is it one of these ten motions? Is that oh. the question you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the quote is, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think it's that that, it, that the intelligence isn't a resemblance by this. Yeah, okay. Right? That's where you were. Yeah, just a. It's the, let's take as the image, one among the ten. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to take an image of one of the ten. Mm -hmm. And that's the one which intelligence resembles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That image. Well, you've got an image and a, and a resemblance going on. Mm -hmm. I just drop it and see what you'd be reading. Let's take one of those ten motions which intelligence is. No, because emotion is a copy. Right, emotion is a copy. Mm -hmm. All right, it's got to it seem like that's right. that. That's right. So that would make it an image. One of those ten images is a resemblance of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you said emotion is a copy you of, of, of what? Is they talk, is they are these the ten emotions and one of them here yeah. resembles the intelligence? Okay. And then that's an image. It's in the image of the intelligence. Right. 897. One of these, yeah. Is that what it said? I think that's Yeah, other than, other, if you don't say it that way, Paul, then you got to say that Intelligence comes from motion. Now, I don't think you want to say that. No. 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 Intelligence is not going to be the image of motion. No. Yeah, as the word resembles is, is the word resembles asymmetrical. You know, as images. I see it as <laughs> yeah. That goes either way. Resemblance is either way. Yeah, the resemblance goes either way. Where image doesn't. I don't. You know, I see it correctly impulsively. I oh, just opining this one. You still get. Yeah. Does Joe resemble okay. John? And John resembles John. Yeah, but hmm. for Paul, that was on the son. It's depends on the motion. Wow. There's something lost. There's something lost. Yeah. That likeness in the general likeness is not a feature. But but image would appear to lose something. I don't know. Like a yeah. dimension. Go two steps and we can have more fun. Yeah. Uh, do do we still remember this much at least of what was said earlier? We set it down that of all things, some are in motion and some are at rest. I certainly agree. Agree? Right now you're one of those yes. at rest. Yeah. And again, of the things in motion, some move in one place and some in several. Right. So, right. Now of these two motions, the one that moves always in one place must necessarily move around some center, being an imitation of circular things turned on a lathe. And it must in every way have the greatest possible kinship and resemblance to the revolution of intelligence. Right. See, because that's a kind of motion, it's not motion. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of motion. Mm -hmm. That's why it's going to resemble one of the ten. Mm -hmm. Or an image of one of the Surely if we said that moving according to what is the same, in the same way, 
in the same place, around the same things, toward the same things, and according to one proportion and order, characterized both intelligence and the motion that moves in one place, speaking of them as images of the motions of a sphere turned on a lathe we'd never appear to be poor craftsmen of beautiful images and speech. Hmm. No. On the other hand, wouldn't the motion that never moves the same, nor according to what is the same, nor in the same place, nor around the same things, nor toward the same things, nor in one place, nor in regularity or order or some proportion be akin to complete lack of intelligence? Yep. Now indeed, it is no longer difficult to say explicitly that since soul is what drives everything around us, it ought to be affirmed that the revolution of heaven is necessarily driven around on the subversion and ordering of either the best soul or the opposite. But, mm -hmm. stranger, from what has been said, at any rate, it isn't pious to say anything other than that the soul, whether it be one or several, that has every virtue, drives things around. Okay, what's the subject we're trying to understand? Intelligence. Revolution. Revolution. To understand intelligence. intelligence through an image Revolution of motion. Of intelligence. Yeah. Through an image of motion. Mm. Mm. Of one of the images of motion. Yeah. Mm. And I thought that uh, that was a significant part that uh, wasn't in the Proclus argument that kind of helped uh, the, with his point. I mean, isn't there Proclus or isn't it in the section that you read? It's not in that section that we read. Uh, uh, it may come up later, but it's not there. And uh, Does comment on the law an awful lot, you know, later down the road brings it in a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important? What? Whether the intellect <laughs> moves or doesn't move. Revolution of intelligence. The question is, uh, uh, what kind of a soul is uh, driving the heavens around. Uh, the uh, and it allows us to conclude that the best soul drives the heavens around, not the opposite. Yeah. Uh, because it dry, yeah, the heavens uh, turn around like a sphere on a lake. Well, I thought we were talking about the intelligence. <laughs> You're talking about soul. The soul that drives the heavens around must be one that partakes of intellect in order uh, to make the heavens uh, have that motion. 
they get the perpetual sameness, uh, the sameness of motion. There had been some mention by Prakas about it gets a motion from the soul, but the perpetual permanency from the intellect. And this part was a discussion about the revolution of the intellect, <coughs> and I like that uh, moving according to what is the same in the same way, about the same in the same place. But Pierre's question, what is, so what? Uh, would you ask that once more, please? The question. Why don't you read the first uh, page? First paragraph. Now, what is the definition of this thing to which the name soul is given? Mm -hmm. Do we have another beside what was just now said? The motion capable of moving itself? Mm. What do we got? The definition of the of, of what of the thing to which the name soul is given. Next one is: Do you claim that the definition to move itself belongs to the same being, as that to which all give the name soul? Page 294 at the top of the page. <coughs> Right up here at the top. First page. Top of the first page. What's that say? You claim that the definition to move itself belongs to the same being as that to which we all give the name soul. Uh, He has distinguished name, definition, and being. And it may be that a definition, one definition, would not go with uh, the same being as a name. And, uh, We apply the name soul to some being. We have also discussed that which is capable of moving itself and have, now have the definition to move itself. And he wants to know whether that belongs to the same being as that uh, as the one we give the name soul. Yeah. What follows it is your sir. Well, so it uh, is uh, which we all give the name so. Uh -huh. There is an Nusia to which we all give the name soul, and it also has a definition of to move itself. But it also says it's a motion. Right. Mm -hmm. So why instead of soul, why don't we say motion? A motion capable of moving itself. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what if the thing in the soul is just said to be responsible 
people around for moving. Mm-hmm. Moving itself is received. Power of self motion is received. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not desires, pleasures, motives that's doing moves itself. So mm-hmm. see, that's a, that's intellection. Yeah, that brings it on to this level, okay. the active intellect. Yeah. But uh, a is heresy. That's right. The very heresy. <laughs> Click. 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 What would be ever conspiracy? Yeah. <laughs> Is it crochet okay. or what would the ever conspiracy the active intellect? How does that connect? Well, he's going to catch. What? Let's see a little active intellect. Yes, last comment. Since you so thoroughly enjoyed it, you're sitting here like beggars. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been dealing with Proclus and Plotinus, Plato Parmenides, and I was thinking of this portion here, the intellect, the usia, and he said, uh, if intellect is essentially intellect, that brings in usia here, and then it's the same with its action. So I'm saying, I'm calling this active intellect, and the result is uh, and and yeah because the usia is the power of the self knowledge of the intellect power of self motion and the uh, The Aristotelians, when they describe uh, uh, the soul, Aristotle wrote a book called On the Soul, which has a Latin title, De Anima. And there's a commentator uh, who influenced Plotinus named Alexander of Aphrodisia. Do you know that he uses Lucia 843 times? Who? Hmm. No, after. Alexander of Aphrodite. Did you count them all wrong? <laughs> what do you, you got a word processor? Yeah. That's huh? Yeah. Alexander of Aphrodite. Aphrodisiac. Aphrodisiac is a place in Turkey. Very erotic place. Uh, an erotic place. It was a temple of Aphrodite. Yeah. And, and uh, in this one, he says that there, uh, he distinguishes the material intellect, the uh, potential intellect, and the active intellect. These are Aristotelian distinctions. Mm. And so that seems like something in the background. I mean, Plotinus is known to have read Alexander and uh, uh Something in the background is this idea of active intellect. And when we were talking about intellect that is the usia, intellect that is is the same with its action, the result is self-knowledge. And this unity is is divine. Uh, And... So active intellect, uh, the question is, or the question was in the Middle Ages, whether this in active intellect is one for all men, or whether each man is his own intellect. Uh, and uh, Averroes was another commentator of uh, Aristotle. And one of the uh, key points in the Averroes heresy had to do with the active intellect, the uh, uh, 
and it had gotten down where the man in the streets, the soldier on the way to the Crusades, thought that if uh, Peter was safe, everyone was safe, if the active intellect is one and all. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have... Hey. So Aquinas had to get on his horse and, and charge uh, the Averroes heresy. The Arabic guy? Hmm? Averroes, yeah. He was in Cordoba. Commenting on there. So that was what was behind that little joke. <laughs>